guys, it's Julie Spencer, author of the Bucks and Peak series. We are working our way through Bucks and Peak the early years. This is the prequel to my Bucks and Peak trilogy. I hope you're liking the videos so far and that you will give them a thumbs up and uh, share them on social media and subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any future videos as they come. Okay. Buxton Peak, The Early Years, Chapter 9, Birthday Blues. Happy 19th birthday, Kai said. They were lying on their backs, stargazing at the top of the high peak, just a short hike up from Ian's parents' house. Their second European tour was complete, and they were enjoying a much-needed holiday before heading back to America. Is it midnight already? Ian held up his cell phone and pushed the little button to light up the screen. Yup, guess it's my birthday. Your mom and dad getting you anything special? No idea, Ian said. Just being home for a few days is enough. What more could I ask for? I thought you liked touring and playing shows. Kai turned his head toward Ian. Are you getting burned out already? <laughs> Not even a little bit. Ian chuckled and tucked his hands behind his head. It's just good to sleep in my own bed. It was nice of your mom to let us crash with you. You'd think we'd be sick of each other by now. She understands, Ian said. I need to have my best mates with me in case we come up with some cool riff and need to practice. You mean if you come up with some cool riff, Mr. Songwriter. Kai pushed Ian's arm with his shoulder. You know, they were right all those years ago when they said you should have ownership rights to our songs. The rest of us would be clueless without you. You're the reason we're selling out stadiums and promoting our second CD. You're the reason we've come as far as we have. This isn't the direction I thought my life was going when I was a little boy. Ian's throat tightened. He turned his head away from Kai to hide his crinkled brows. His voice was little more than a whisper. I always thought I'd serve a mission when I turned 19. A mission? Like for your church? Kai asked. Yeah, most guys choose to serve and go out for two years and share the gospel. Two years? Kite turned and propped his head on his arm. Why would anyone want to do that? To share the message that Jesus Christ is our Savior, Ian said. There are so many people in the world who don't know that. I don't believe in God. Kai rolled back onto the ground and folded his arms across his chest. And therein lies my point, Ian said. I haven't been a very good example if my best mate can't feel the truth of that message. You've been a fine example, preacher boy, Kai chuckled. I've just never seen any proof there is a God. You don't need proof. You need faith, Ian said. Not happening, preacher boy, so give it up. Ian startled when he heard footsteps shuffling up the path. You guys snogging up here? Gary called. How many times do I have to prove it to you? Kai hollered back. I like girls. Maybe so, but you're in love with Ian. Andy plopped onto the ground next to Ian and poked him in the side. Cut it out. Ian scooted away from Andy and pushed him away. I don't like to be tickled. It's only okay when Kai tickles him, Gary said, sinking to the grass and wrinkling his nose. Shut up, Gary, Ian and Kai said at the same time. Maybe that's the reason Ian's still a virgin, Andy said. Because he's in love with Kai and knows he'll never be able to steal Kai away from all the girls. Dude, I'm waiting until I'm married, Ian sat up and punched Andy in the arm. To a girl. Hey, I can't play my bass guitar with a broken arm. Andy rubbed his shoulder. Good thing we don't have a show for another three weeks. Hey, did you guys know it's Ian's birthday? Kai asked. We should take him out and get him drunk, Gary suggested. Very funny, Ian said. Strippers? Gary blinked his eyes as if it was an innocent question. No, Ian almost shouted. We're just teasing you, mate. Andy punched Ian back. Chill out. Here's an idea, Ian said. He stood and brushed off his jeans. How about you come to church with me on Sunday as a birthday present? They all stood to follow Ian back down the hill. Can I bring one of the strippers with me to church? Gary asked. Shut up, Gary, the other three said together. Happy birthday, son. George Taylor handed Ian a large clothing box. I've known all your life exactly what to get you on your 19th birthday. Ian's dad pursed his lips and furrowed his brow. Ian's own chest tightened as he took the heavy box and laid it across his lap. 
Thanks, Dad. As Ian lifted the lid, he lowered his head and raised his hand to his forehead, hiding the frustration in his eyes. He didn't want his mates to know how special this gift was or why it was so significant. He gripped his other hand into a fist and dug his fingernails into his palm. After taking several moments to slow his breathing and pull himself together, he looked up and met his father's eyes. Well, what is it? Andy tried to peek under the lid. Ian slapped his hand away. All eyes were on him, brows raised, expectant and excited to find out what was so special in the mystery box. Ian pulled the lid off and set it aside. Then he brushed the tissue paper off to reveal a very expensive and finely tailored suit. He held up the navy blue suit coat, ran his fingers along the pinstripes on the coordinating tie, and moved the pants to reveal a beautiful pair of dress shoes. It's a suit. Gary raised the corner of his upper lip and looked away. Okay. It's to wear, Ian's mom gulped, to church. Ian knew exactly what his mom really wanted to say. The suit was for his mission, the mission he would never serve. He felt his lower lip tremble. I'm so sorry, Mom. Ian's whisper was barely discernible. I'm sorry I'm such a disappointment. Son, you are not a disappointment. Ian's dad pushed Andy away and sat next to Ian. He put his arms around Ian's shoulders. His mom dropped to her knees on the other side and wrapped herself around his waist. Ian's shoulders heaved and he tried to choke back tears. Kai stood and moved away from the couch. Guys, Kai said, come on, let's give them a minute. Look at all you've accomplished in your short life, Ian. Claire raised her eyes to her son's and he saw the tears streaming down her face. We are so proud of you. But you always hoped I'd go on a mission. Ian brushed his mom's hair off her forehead, feeling compassion for the loss they must be experiencing. Their only son, choosing a much different path than they'd expected. Sometimes life takes us in a different direction than we originally thought, his dad said. You're serving a mission in your own way, by traveling the world and standing in stadiums full of sold-out crowds. I'm singing inappropriate songs to girls who want to rip my clothes off. Ian glared at his dad, guilt washing over him. How is that being a good example to anyone? You're growing up and gaining a testimony, Ian. Claire sat back on her heels and nodded to her son. I'm sure the next album you write will be much more appropriate. It was a not-so-subtle hint and reminder that Ian had control over the words he wrote. Just because the fans wanted to hear smut didn't mean he had to write it. Even hard rockers and rappers had performed songs about prayer and angels. His mum was right. He had more control than he wanted to admit. He nodded and took a deep breath. Thanks. This is the nicest gift I've ever received. I hope you have a chance to wear it, son. George Taylor's eyes were pointed, knowing, communicating something Ian didn't want to acknowledge. I'll wear it to church tomorrow, Ian said. I'll come with you. Kai leaned against the doorframe of the living room. I still don't believe in God, but I'll come with you. Thank you, Ian nodded. The following day, the four guys of Buxton Peak sat side by side in a pew at Ian's small congregation in Macclesfield. Many heads turned when they walked in the room, but no one bothered them. They only stayed for sacrament meeting, then they drove back through the Peak District National Park, where they had a peaceful Sunday afternoon, lying around, talking, and napping in the Taylor's living room. On Monday, the guys resumed practicing in the basement, and Ian pushed aside the peace of the gospel as he became lost in the passion of his music. The American tour was a few weeks away, and he needed to be ready. Okay, that's the end of the chapter. I hope you guys are liking the videos so far, and that you will give it a thumbs up, and uh, share them on social media, and subscribe to my channel. See you for the next chapter.